What is this? Apollo 11, the first mission. This is Apollo 11? The first mission. These are the samples, all of the samples that were brought back from the Apollo 11 mission. Is it still awesome for you? It's awesome, yes. It's very it's awesome. It's the only place in the world that you can actually work with moon rocks every day with the amount of samples that we do. That's amazing. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. I've always wanted to do this intro. So, four years ago, I had the tremendous opportunity of going to Johnson Space Center to the Lunar Sample Laboratory Facility. Basically, it's as close as you can be to going to the moon on Earth. When the astronauts got off of the lander, one of their main jobs was to collect rocks, right? Now, I've always thought they would just gather these rocks and get them back on the lander real quick because they had a limited amount of time. Oh no. They had to approach a specific rock, a specific way, and capture it in such a way that we could study it decades later. Today on Smarter Every Day, we're going to go to the facility on the Earth where they keep the moon rocks, where they process them, where they cut them up and give some pieces to museums and universities. It is an awesome facility. So we're going to go meet one of my favorite people on the planet, Andrea. She's the, the director of the facility. We're going to go see what they do with moon rocks today. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. We're at Johnson Space Center, and we are about to go see real moon rocks. But first, we have to get the camera cleaned off. So why are you cleaning it? Um, to get any kind of outside um, particles, dirt, off. you're going into a clean room. Got it. So we're going to bunny suit up? Yes, sir. And so you're putting booties on that have not been exposed to dirt or anything. So now you're in a cleaner area. Cleaner. So as we go back, yes. It gets progressively more clean? Exactly. I see. Okay. And the rooms are pressurized so that the clean air flows outward. Oh, so wow. That the dirty air does not, like this door is open. Air is flowing that way. Yes. This takes a while. <laughs> All right. Yes, it does. I hope I don't have to pee during this. <laughs> I you hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of the only people in the world that get to operate with moon rocks on a daily basis? One of few. Uh, we have a special group here and that's our task. Daily we work with the lunar sample. No, no, no. You're giving me the NASA voice. <laughs> I want the Andrea voice. I don't want the NASA voice. <laughs> Down on blue. <laughs> <laughs> so every day you get to mess with the moon rocks. Yes, every day we work with Is it pretty cool? It's a cool thing. We work with the Moon Rocks every day, a special group of people, and that's what we do. That's awesome. <laughs> that was still the NASA voice. <laughs> so, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for 39 years, and I was just one when I started working here. Yeah, <laughs> I was here 40. That's my story, and I'm still That's here. great. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is the who I want to work with here. This is good. So we're going to go into our air shower and we stay in here for one minute. Okay. And uh, it's a laminar flow. You, so that you have no idea how much. A less clean area and a clean you area. have no idea how much I like laminar flow. You, yes. don't, you don't even know. I can't even explain it to you. Yeah, and you really love it. <laughs> I do. So here we go. Okay, here we go. And only Laminar four flow. can go in here at a oh. time. So one, two, three. No way. So the air. Ready. Four. That's where they are now. Is that our, is our minute up? Yes. Our microwave's done? So watch your step down. I'm watching it. Boom. Bam. Wow. All right. Uh, what's your schedule? How long are you here? I'm I'm on the moon as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I don't I don't care how long this takes. Okay. So what are we doing now? We're in our pristine sample lab. Okay. And so there were six missions that went to the moon from 1969 to 1972, bringing mm -hmm. back 842 pounds of rocks, which is 382 kilograms. Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, and those samples are curated here in this laboratory in these nitrogen-filled cabinets. Uh -huh. A very pure type nitrogen gas. This is Apollo 17. So I'm going to pull out the gloves. This is a neoprene glove that we use, and we cannot touch the sample with these gloves if they're unbagged. But the samples that I'm going to show you are actually bagged. And later on, I'm going to let you go into a cabinet as well, but there won't be any samples in that cabinet. Gotcha. This is Apollo 17 sample. The sample number is 76315,89. So you know that this sample has been broken at least into 89 pieces. That's how they're indexed. This is how they, yes, and this is how they're packaged for storage. Do you only touch the moon rocks with tools that you're holding with gloves, right? If the moon rocks are open, then we only touch them with uh, Teflon aluminum or stainless steel. So there would be tweezers or Teflon gloves. And this is a pair of gloves, gloves over your gloves. Gloves over the gloves. 
Wow, exactly. that's so amazing. We, You're controlling the materials that actually touch the moon rock. So exactly. you said Teflon, stainless steel. Stain so even if they see that material on the sample when they're analyzing it, they can just subtract it out because they know that that's what you're manipulating it with. Exactly. That makes sense. Yes. Finger, 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 finger. Grab, make a fist. Grab, and punch. Yes, keep going. Wiggle your hand around. Perfect, Got you it. Did that. Got it, okay. One more. All right, learning how to grab and punch on your rocks, all right. <laughs> There you go. We good? We're in. Okay. We're in. You pull that tray really over there. You see the one with the top on it? Oh my goodness. Pull there's, it toward you. there's no way I can get to that. Reach. Okay. Got it. There's no such thing as I can't. Excellent. Okay. Take the lid off and set it on the floor. I, me and you can hang out. Okay. There's a black pedal on the floor. Push down the black pedal and look, it's going to go to zero. Take your foot up. Oh, you just. Got you it. tear it out. Now put one of those weights gently on the balance. This is a super balance, isn't it? Gently on the balance. Mm -hmm. You break it, your body. I'm not gonna break it. I'm not gonna break it. Okay, that's actually a hundred gram weight. Wow, down to the microgram. And the hundred gram Milligrams, weight actually you. weighs ninety nine point nine 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 seven four. But we have a plus and minus tolerance, so it's within the range. I see. If it was not within the range, then we would have to stop right now, get a technician to tweak the balance before we can go any further. Good grief. So uncertainty and accuracy is important. super important. This lab serves as a kind of staging area. NASA uses it to provide lunar material to academia for study but the lab itself is supplied by the vault. When you walk into this room and you know that it contains some of the most precious material on Earth, it's an absolutely surreal experience. This is it? This is a pristine sample vault, and all the samples are actually still stored in nitrogen cabinets, also by mission. If you look up there, you can see the mission just like, that. also by mission just like that. What is this? Apollo 11, the first mission. This is Apollo 11? The first mission. These are the samples, all the samples that were brought back from the Apollo 11 mission. Is it still awesome for you? It's awesome, yes. So all the moon rocks in the entire world, the major moon rocks, all of them are in this room. Yes, starting with Apollo 11 over in the corner. Yeah. That's Apollo 12. These are 14, 15, 16, and 17. That's crazy. So why don't we have it in multiple locations? Like why aren't, why aren't half of them in a mountain in Colorado? There is another remote facility that we have just in case Johnson Space Center was destroyed. We have 15% uh, of the samples stored in a remote location for storage. Somewhere else is all you're going to tell me. Somewhere else. Got it. That's it's all. Nice car remote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Each one of them have a security seal on there, which means that we have inventoried every sample in those cabinets, and we know our database has every sample, every container number, every sample weight, and sample description in there for everything that's in there. Wow, that's crazy. So do you have a, a, a photographic index of all these? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. Wow. And so that's how you go through and select what you want. You know the, exactly. the composition? Yes. You have a description of everything. All the rocks were described. This is an open tray because there's no seal on it. I see. Is that heavy? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there are Apollo 15 samples. That's an actual rock right there? Yes, it is. And the number is 15499,179. So it lets you know it's been broken at least 179. So times. it was a big, much bigger rock yes. when you first got it? Yes. That's amazing. That is pretty interesting. So how, is it a big deal when you get to chip a big rock? Yes, it is. And, and actually, you're gonna see that process when we go back into the lab. Really? You see a large sample that's being worked on. Oh, that's awesome. When they brought them off the moon, did they have them in nitrogen or anything on the way back? They were in bags. They were not in nitrogen. They were sealed in bags. Oh, I see. And different, and yes. Rock boxes. Gotcha. Judy's bags for <laughs> They took two rock boxes on every mission. Really? Out of a single piece of aluminum alloy, 775, had triple gaskets. Those were to be closed on the moon in vacuum and remain a vacuum, and for Apollo 11 and 12, they were opened in the vacuum. No way. In my head, it's like they got inside the ascent module and just like threw rocks on the floor. I know that's not how it happened, but in my head, 
you know, it's like your pickup truck and you just go through it. Some were <laughs> sealed in vacuum boxes on the surface of the moon and they weren't open until they were open here. I don't know why I've never thought about this, but you can't just pick up a rock on the moon, throw it in the lander, and bring it back to Earth. Because by the time you get in the lander, the oxygenated environment in the lander is going to change the chemical composition of the rock as it oxidizes, right? So how do you get a rock back to Earth without Earth in the atmosphere contaminating it? The answer is a super fancy box. They could put it in there, in bags of course, and then they could seal it up and get it all the way back to Earth in a vacuum so it could still be studied today with the same chemical composition as it had on the moon. We know there's uh, a lot of scientists from uh, a number of countries standing by to see the lunar samples and uh, we thought you'd be interested in seeing that they really are here. Um, these two boxes are the sample return containers. They, they are vacuum packed uh, containers that were closed in a vacuum on the lunar surface, sealed, and then uh, brought inside the lab and put inside uh, these fiberglass bags, zippered and resealed around the, outs around the outside and placed in these uh, receptacles in the side of the command module. I found a really cool report from NASA that explained how they processed the moon rocks from Apollo 11 and 12 in a vacuum. Turns out this was an incredibly difficult ordeal to figure out. According to this report, they had to basically make a reverse spacesuit, the arms and everything. They developed special storage containers, tweezers, all kinds of things. But in the end, the report said that it made more sense to process the lunar material under atmospheric pressure using dry nitrogen. We had a vacuum glove box. It was not easy to maintain. You know, if you got any kind of leak, you got stuff from outside, inside. And if you notice, these are all positive pressure cabinets. It keeps the box clean. We went back to the lab and I got to witness Sharice in the process of preparing a large moon rock for a scientist. The team explained to me how they got their tools into the glove box without contaminating the samples. Everything that enters the presence of the moon rocks has to be cleaned via a special procedure. Think about it. Tools, nameplates, bags. If any of these items are dirty, they can become a source of contamination. If it goes into that cabinet with the rocks, it better be clean. Every tool, every nameplate, everything that's used to process the rocks is cleaned to an insane specification and then it's triple bagged. These bags are then removed in succession as the tools get closer and closer to the moon rocks to avoid contamination at every step. For example, here you can see me putting on a second set of gloves just to touch the second bag before placing this chipping bowl into the airlock. So I'm just going to turn this up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What flow rate do you want? Just go to 100. 100 is good. And you're going to purge for five minutes. Five minute purge? Uh -huh. And so that's purging the airlock, which is there, which is where I put the tools. Exactly. And you're going to reach in and get the, the tools, or she's going to do that? She's going to do it when she comes in. She's going to turn the airlock off. Okay. The flow, and then she's going to reach in and pull in the tools. What are these and I'm looking at? Data packs, which is the history of every, every, this is what NASA tells us to do. We get curator orders that tell you exactly what to do. And this was done in 1985. Okay, now these, of course, are, and the first thing I told you we had to do was weigh the rock to make sure that the rock is within tolerance. So I did this back in 1985. Did you really? You're not that old. I know. I know. Somebody forged it. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> and this is the first thing you do. Okay. You take a picture of the rock from the whatever side you, this is the bottom face, then you walk to the other side and you take the top face. That's why you want the saw to go right there, and it's going to come out right there. What kind of saw do you use? Bend saw. It's a it's an old homeboy meat cutter that was modified. So it has a diamond edge blade, so that no oils and lubricants are used because that will contaminate the surface of the sample. So we'll show it to you. It's right over in the other room. Cool. So, yeah. so you saw it? Yes. And as you're sawing, every time a piece breaks off, you have to stop and take a picture. Now, fifteen four five nine comma zero is the parent. Okay. Comma zero is the parent of every rock, but every time a piece breaks off, you take a picture and give it a number. Wow. Because as you're going through, see how those pieces are breaking? I, oh, so right here, so you got the little you pieces. You got a whole bunch of pieces breaking off. You got to put it back together. Oh my goodness. It's like a puzzle. And then you also have to figure out you the... You have to know every number for it. 
Really? Absolutely. Because see if you got this little white piece off that number 254. Right. Years ago, and now you want to do the studies of the same thing, and somebody has used it up. You could actually come and find the other part that's on 252 right there of the same mineral. Good and gracious. Analysis. So you have to know where every sample came from. We know if a rock has been broken up into 2,000 pieces, literally from looking at the pictures, you could know exactly how to put it back together and what all the pieces came from. Take just a second to think about how complex this problem is. Every single angle is photographed, some parts even down to the microscopic level, so you can put the entire rock back together with nothing but photographs and paperwork. One thing you'll see in most of these photos of the moon rocks are these little cubes off to the side that I like to call letter dice. The cube, north, south, east, west, top, bottom, you see the cubes that's in there? The astronauts took pictures of the sample on the moon and gave them orientation. We keep that orientation. If we break and flip the rock, we flip the cube so that we'll know exactly where the sample was positioned in respect to the location on the moon. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in a few minutes. I would have Going never, really quick, I would have never thought to think about how important it was. It's the very important yeah. because uh, you want to know if it was exposed to cosmic rays, solar wind, whatever. What was the depth? Was it sitting on the surface of the moon? Was it buried underneath something. All of that is important in the research that the uh, PIs are doing. These are not letter dice, <laughs> which if you say letter dice, people will make fun of you, won't they? They're orientation cubes. Orientation cubes? Uh, yeah, I'm glad I know that now. Okay, <laughs> what, what do we have? What are the letters? So, you know, north, south, east, east and west, and then top and bottom. Gotcha, yeah. okay. Letter dice. <laughs> <laughs> You've forgotten more about the moon than most people will ever know, haven't you? <laughs> and I have forgotten. <laughs> it's amazing. And this is a Poly 11 soil sample. Really? And you can hold this. I can hold it? Mm -hmm. I would love to hold that. It's a Poly 11 sample. What's the number? 1071, comma. comma, 11. Correct. But hold on, there, there's... You said it's broken apart. Yeah, this is comma 11 off of, so there's a comma 12, there's a comma 15, there's a comma 100, but this is, once it gets this number comma So there was 11, a sample and you just took some out and that's, those yes. together are the sample. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. This is a return sample, so it actually have gone out to scientists. They did their studies and analysis. It could have been one piece when they got it and now it came back broken huh. into these pieces. But they still have to return the sample. It doesn't Andrea, let me hold it. Still have to. <laughs> it's in a bag. I don't care. I got to hold it. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you for all your time, all right. ladies. Questions? It was amazing. I appreciate that. So, I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. It was awesome. <laughs> A huge thank you to Johnson Space Center for actually letting me go into the facility where they store the moon rocks. I am very grateful. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Andrea. That's a huge deal. Also, thanks to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center for letting me film on the moon. There's two things you can do if you want to. Number one is you can subscribe to Smarter Every Day if you'd like to, if you like this kind of thing. Number two is consider going to watch one of these videos for my friends. One is Joe Hansen from It's Okay to Be Smart. He talks about what we actually learn from these rocks. And the other one is Brady Heron, my buddy. He's got a channel called Objectivity. He talks specifically about the Genesis rock, which is a really cool rock that taught us a ton of stuff. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. I will now slow down my footage. <laughs> Does that work at all? <laughs>